money. What Citizens United means is that corporations can take funds right out of their treasuries in unlimited amounts if your candidate's elected or candidate's defeated. Think what it will mean in small towns where one corporation truly can drown out all other voices. I worry what it will mean in judicial elections in states with elected judges as businesses with cases in court and get favorable judges elected to the bench. To bring it back to the Koch brothers, Koch Industries is the largest privately owned corporation in the United States. It spent $2.5 million in the last election cycle. About $2 million more was spent by individuals with ties to Koch Industries. The effect of Citizens United in distorting our political system will be enormous. And don't think it's the last thing that the five conservatives are going to do on the Supreme Court to empower corporations. As I said, as you know, Citizens United is about independent expenditures by corporations. There's been a law in the book since 1907 that corporations cannot contribute money directly to candidates for federal elective office. This was not an issue in Citizens United. But Justices Scalia, Kennedy, and Thomas, three who were in the majority in Citizens United, have repeatedly said that's unconstitutional. And I think Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Alito, the other justice in the majority in Citizens United, will be with them. For after all, once Citizens United says that corporations have the same free speech rights as individuals, once Citizens United says that spending money in elections is speech under the First Amendment, then it would follow that corporations should have the right to contribute money directly to candidates in unlimited amounts. Hard to imagine anything that will more create corruption and risk the appearance of corruption. And I think that's just a short time away. I think it's important, as we think about Citizens United, to see how much it shows conservative rhetoric about the court to be hypocrisy. Since Richard Nixon ran for president in 1968, conservatives have railed against liberal judicial activism. But Citizens United shows us that the real activism now is from the right. I'm never sure what the phrase judicial activism means. I think it's usually just a label that conservatives use for the decisions they don't like. But if it means anything, well, a court's active if it's striking down laws and restrained if it's deferring to the democratic process. It's active if it's overruling precedent, restrained if it's following prior decisions. Conservatives said the court's active if it protects rights that weren't mentioned in the text or intended by the framers. Well, look at Citizens United in this light. The court struck down a law adopted in 2001, overwhelmingly passed by both houses of Congress and signed President Bush. In January 2003, in McConnell versus Federal Election Commission, the Supreme Court upheld the very provision it struck down in Citizens United. What changed in seven years? Did the court find some musty history of the First Amendment that led it to believe it made a mistake? Of course not. The only difference was that Justice O'Connor had been in the majority in McConnell in 2003, and she was replaced by Justice Alito, who joined the dissenters to overrule it and create the majority in Citizens United. And where is the conservatives' concern about original intent when we get to Citizens United. I'm skeptical of talking about original intent, but it seems clear that the framers never imagined protecting corporations under the First Amendment. The First Amendment in the Bill of Rights is about safeguarding individuals, and surely the framers never thought of spending money in elections as speech. In the last week, Common Cause has raised some key ethical questions about Justice Scalia and Thomas even participating in Citizens United. 
And a lot of this ties back to the Koch brothers. For example, federal law requires that all federal judges, including Supreme Court justices, disclose financial interests, including, of course, of their spouses. Justice Clarence Thomas has refused to fill out these forms concerning his wife's financial interests. His wife has been an official organization called Liberty Central. Who's funding it? Is the money coming from the Koch brothers, for example? Justice Thomas, Virginia Thomas, refused to tell us. We know that Clarence Thomas and Antonin Scalia have been at these seminars funded by the Koch brothers. Federal law says, common sense says, judges should avoid even the appearance of impropriety. Surely there's that when they're at the Koch brothers' events. And there's no doubt that the Koch brothers benefit in an unprecedented scale from the Supreme Court's decision in Citizens United. But I want to conclude by saying we can't give up. There are ways of limiting the effects of Citizens United. We need to have much stricter disclosure laws, local, state, and federal. <laughs> the Disclose Act in Congress would have been only a small step in that direction. But Republicans in the Senate filibustered it and kept it from happening. We need to make sure that things like the Disclose Act pass and that similar laws are adopted at state and local levels. Senator Schumer came up with an ingenious idea. He said, federal employees are prohibited by the Hatch Act from engaging in partisan political activity. Let's prohibit corporations that contract with the federal government from being able to spend money in election campaigns. The Supreme Court has said the Hatch Act is constitutional, so would that. Every state regulates the businesses that operate within it. States can adopt laws that say, for instance, no business can spend money on campaign expenditures without the express permission of a majority of its shareholders. Whose money is a business spending? The shareholders. So we should pressure our state legislature here in California, state legislatures across the country to adopt such laws. It is only through such statutes that we can reclaim democracy. We can't give up. We have to reclaim democracy. <laughs>